Elf. Take a minute. Alrighty, I think we are live now. So welcome to another episode of Whiskey with an Agent. I am Jared Allison with JDA Florida Homes, and I am an agent with Century 21 Alton Clark here in Central Florida. But I cover all of Central Florida um, when it comes to real estate. However, tonight is a little bit more relaxed. We're drinking whiskey. And um, we're going to talk about photography and marketing and uh, everything that goes with that. So uh, there's a lot of interesting things that come with um, when, you, when you're listing a home. So uh, that's what we're going to dive into. So I've got a brand new intro. So I'm going to play that for you guys. Hopefully it comes through. Maybe. All right, man. What's up, Chris? All right, I got Chris Noon on the line with us. He's joining me for Whiskey with an Agent. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's really go good ahead. to be here, man. This is, this is a lot of fun, Jared. Like, I, I've always been really into the podcast world. And so for you right. to announce that you're doing like a little podcast, agent, Whiskey with an Agent, I was jumping on board. I'm like, yes, I am 100% <laughs> in on this. We'll love to be a guest uh, and hopefully some more to come. So yeah, this definitely. is funny. Um, cheers yeah cheers i guess we got a drink to whenever you say cheers mm -hmm. so uh if if you guys have a particular whiskey you want to go out and get i'll wait for you um obviously we've already got ours i've got more right back there i think chris has some more waiting just in case just in uh, case nope uh jenny jenny peters hey jenny what's going on she says hello Chris, you have the. What's uh, up, Jenny? You have the uh, the comments up at all or no? Uh, let's see. It actually says on my end that we're having a little hard time playing this video. Oh, so really? I'm not seeing it here. Let me okay. try just kind of refreshing it. Oh, well, that's fine. Um, it's showing live on my end, and it's got both of our uh, mugs up there on the screen. So. Okay. Unless somebody says it's not working, then we'll just continue on. So okay. um, so tonight we're going to talk about photography, marketing. There's a lot of stuff that goes into the marketing uh, part of listing a home. So it's not just show up to a house and take pictures. Uh, there's, there's a lot more to it. I mean, we're talking photography. We're talking aerials, uh, 3D mm -hmm. tours, video, all that kind of stuff. And there's some there's a lot of importance to not just having those things, but also having quality, uh, having those things in high quality because we're in a, I mean, since pandemic, I mean, I know you've seen it, Chris, the, a lot more people are shopping online. I mean, people are looking at houses mm -hmm. and putting contracts before even seeing them in person. So, I mean, yeah. 100 percent i i agree but long before like the covid like the average shopper statistics showed that it was like 92 to 94 percent of buyers were, were shopping online because that's the number one spot i mean you have big juggernauts such as zillow and realtor.com trulia and uh many other places where a lot of people shop online and right. since the covid happened i guarantee that number went up from like 94 to about 98 percent because with the whole world or the whole country just doing a mass exodus from major cities, it's just that huge surplus had to have increased that number to like 98%. Yeah. A lot of buyers that I've been experiencing from my listings have been um, out of state. They've never seen the house. So a lot of the, the recent ones, the most recent one that I had was on uh, in Deltona. I had 30 offers in four days and majority of those people were not even from the local area. Really? So, wow. yeah. 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 It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, and the fact that 
the average time on market or the median time on market right now for for this area is right about six days so i mean yeah. having having good photos having good yeah. everything because that's that's going to help you know yes. help you get those contracts within that allotted time or within yeah. that time and for the so. median for the nation is 17 days and yes. that's that's wild so yes. it's in order to get such as like my my um my, my latest listing, I told you, you got like 30 offers on it. And it has direct result to the marketing, to photography, to, to that effect and right. why it's so important. And we're going to show you, uh, I'm sure we'll show ex examples, right, Jared? Yep. Of, of the quality. Yes. A lot of people are, are griping that agents get paid too much for almost nothing. You sometimes are selling themselves. It's like, although like the market is definitely having a demand and impact, but the level of quality of the realtor that you hire has a drastic impact on the um, the effects you get when it comes to selling home. And yep. a lot of that has to go into quality. Yep. Of yep. The photography and marketing. Correct. And I mean, you know, to your point there, Chris, is, you know, as far as what realtors are getting paid, I mean, I'll go through. So when we're talking about this stuff, I'm going to kind of throw out some prices of what it actually costs to do uh, some high-end photos and, and mm -hmm. video alone is is probably the most expensive thing that that you could pay yeah. somebody to do. And depending on the the quality and you know the type of video that you want to do and the style of the home and what you want to feature and things like that. However, I mean there's there's an added cost of I've seen videos people do videos for upwards of fifteen hundred bucks. Like literally yeah. on a million dollar home, easily easily spend fifteen hundred dollars yeah. or more. <laughs> exactly yeah. so if you're dealing with a million dollar home that's a big home and yes. so there's so many elements uh lifestyle yep. um uh, videographies are like four or five minutes long um and then you have if you notice like TikTok and uh, some quality influencers on social media their videos are the way it's shot structured the the zooming the cut sequences the music and all and tied into it that's a lot of work that the videographers have to sit down shooting is easy that's that's a mm -hmm. half days to a day's work yeah the rest of the time is just all just editing editing right. editing editing yeah and so that's where the time and the money comes into play with it yep <clears throat> i've got a couple of comments on here and so i guess not everybody's drinking a whiskey somebody mentioned dr pepper somebody else mentioned mr pib what uh i don't know i i think dr pepper <laughs> is where it's at mr pib he didn't go to school i guess enough, so, so uh, <laughs> but he's not a doctor so I, I mean what what what's your choice if you had to choose one uh dr pepper there you go i'm a dr pepper guy i'm not over mr pib yep i'm not sure if it was a debate on there but dr pepper is like that <laughs> just saying agreed <laughs> Agreed. Um, well, let's jump into it. So I've got a, a few things, key points here that I just want to okay. go over. Um, so, well, let's actually. So, guys, if if you haven't figured out, this is just really this is episode two. So we're still figuring out the um, mechanics of how to get this set up and everything. And it's very relaxed. So if I'm messing up, just bear with me. Throw some comments in there. Um, yeah. and, and we'll, we'll keep it going, but, oh, let's see. Um, so photography, mm -hmm. actually let's, let's go into, so when, when you're thinking about listing your home, let's talk about a few things at a minimum that your real estate agent should be offering to you so real estate agents you know when you're when you're getting ready hopefully you're going to interview some real estate agents and you interview you know several of them what they should be offering you as far as the digital assets at a minimum is going to be photos and some sort of uh, zillow 3d something like that but those are probably the two minimum things i, I would think uh, what are you, what are your thoughts on that chris I would also have to argue uh, videography. Okay. Um, if you if you look where majority of people are hanging out on a digital space, it's social media. And if you a lot of not there are people who post, but predominantly Instagram and Facebook and now TikTok, they're really pushing videography. 
That's and true. Um, yep. although they're like 15 to 20, 30 seconds, that kind of seems to be where I think real estate needs to kind of start turning for videos. Cause we used to do these long pans, slow pans so people can absorb it. But right. it, at a rate of people scrolling, it's seconds. If you can't capture somebody within literally a two seconds, they're scrolling yep. right through. Yep. So I'll, I digital walkthroughs are 100% important. I think there should be a must for yep. sure, especially yep. with the amount of people who are looking online and who maybe can't walk the property physically because they're buying from out of state. Right. That should be a must on all listings. I do it with all of my listings, regardless of price point as I yep. do that. Yep. Um, and then yep. also the, the video needs to start switching it up. I'm thinking about it. And then high quality photos, because that's going to be the first initial grab attention click. Yep. Right there. So we just got a comment up here. Jillian's asking, uh, does that include the older population? And there's there's two sides to that. The older population, they're not necessarily on t TikTok or no. Instagram, but they are sometimes on Facebook or mm -hmm. um, a lot of times the older population. So especially now during the pandemic, they don't want to go out. They, they don't want to expose themselves to no. the risk of getting COVID-19. So they are shopping online. So that's where um, the, the, you know, good photography and then, mm -hmm. you know, a, a video for older population, I think might be uh, an easier thing for them to, to view, yeah. you know, it's probably yeah. a lot easier for them to navigate a video than it would be like a 3d tour, mm -hmm. um, for example, okay. but Agreed. We... I, I look at my analytics um, for when I on, on, so on Facebook, particularly of the age demographic, and it is the older generation versus the millennial generation on Instagram. Uh, yep. Millennials like the 30s and like the or whatever that age range is definitely on Instagram predominantly. Right. And then the older generation definitely is on Facebook. And I, the analytics kind of just is proof right there for for me at least on my videos that i've noticed right and simply in that 60s yep but then you know the other thing we have to think about too is are the millennials and they're they're getting into that they're starting to get to that age where they're actually looking at buying homes so we have to be able to market to that particular demographic through mm -hmm. these through these forms of media so yeah. um Let's see, I had, I thought I had a stat here about how many millennials were coming into the market. I don't see it. Oh, well, there's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> it's making a majority of the purchases right now. Yeah, uh, because of the because I'm calling it the COVID effect because of COVID. And this is just from my assumption. I'm not by any means right or I'm wrong. Um, the, the older generation, since they are more susceptible to the COVID, a lot of them are taking advantage instead of moving and downsizing. They're taking advantage of low interest rate, doing refis, cashing out, and they're remodeling their entire house. Yep. So they're yep. not actually entering the marketplace very yep. much. Yep. I found that uh, that stat here. So customers age eighteen to thirty four are one hundred and thirty percent more likely to look for or to look at a place if there's a virtual tour. So, and that's kind of that millennial. Uh, demographic there, eighteen to thirty-four. So yeah. just by having that, you're you're now appealing to that that whole new demographic versus demographic. not having it. So, um, yeah. but going back to you know the we're talking about at a minimum what an agent should be doing as far as digital assets, but is obviously photography. Um, you know, three D tour if they can, mm -hmm. and then you know even if it's just a walkthrough video where you're holding um, your camera, hopefully on some sort of gimbal. I've got a camera phone or a cell phone gimbal right here. Hopefully mm -hmm. they're using one of these. So you're not getting a, a shaky walkthrough, a shaky walkthrough on the way through. Yep. I actually use, I just bought. So talking about the new toys and stuff here. I just bought this Pocket 2 uh, gimbal camera. Have you seen one of these? No, a Pocket so, gimbal. 
Yeah. What's so, the, oh, wow. Check that out. So it's got a little screen on it. And then, so, it, and then this is a gimbal. So I actually can walk through. I did a house earlier today. I just shot a, mm. a house for another agent. <clears throat> and I use this um, for, you know, the, if I'm not doing high end video or something, I mean, this still shoots 4K 60. So um, <laughs> you but, can't go wrong. <laughs> no, that's great. No. So, I mean, I'm shooting 4K. My, my big camera doesn't even shoot 4K 60. However, it, there's, it has better picture quality and everything. Yeah. Um, and I can do like 4K 30 frames a second. That's what I mean, 30, you know, 60 frames per second for those that yeah. weren't sure what I was talking about. And it's just a matter of how many frames per second that the camera is, is shooting and it allows you to do uh, different things with it. But this thing shoots 4K resolution and it's got the gimbal. So when I'm walking through the house, I can just yeah. go through and I get that buttery smooth uh, Yeah. And you get to see it through a mini display. And I get this little tiny display that, you know, you can kind of see what's going on. And you're not going to, you know, get real detailed on, on this screen. Mm. But but it's pretty cool, some of the things that you can do. And, and um, but. Jared, send me a link of that when you can. Okay. It doesn't have to be right away. Yeah. Definitely yeah, got to yeah, get I'll, that. Got to put that yeah, in my it's, arsenal. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. And I, I literally, I carry it in my pocket. And when it's time to shoot video, I pull it out. Otherwise, I mean, I have my big uh, gimbal that I put my big camera on. But, you know, you got to pull it out. You put it together. You got to balance it and all balance that kind it. of stuff. You so can spend easy 20 this, minutes just balancing. Exactly. <laughs> so so whereas this, it's a lot easier to go in and just um, pull that out and then just start walking through. And it records audio and, and it, mm. there's a whole lot of cool things you can do with it. But so, like I said, at a minimum... They should at least be doing that. Um, and then, yep. so one thing I do see with other agents, and I've got some examples here, um, is they're going through and they're using their cell phone to go through and take, you know, quality photos, which don't get me wrong. Yeah. If you have a, a brand new, you know, high-end phone, mm -hmm. it, they do really, really nice photos, but it's... It's not, it's still not going to be the it, same. You as, can tell, as, you know, the other, I guess what I'm trying to say is, okay, you can have a high end phone. You can have a high end camera in general, mm -hmm. a DSLR, a mirrorless camera or anything like that. But if you don't know how to use it, you're still not going to get good quality photos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I see a lot of times is agents coming through in portrait mode. Landscape mode is how you would want to take a photo to start with, but I see a lot of photos. Actually, let me pull up a couple examples. I pulled these off the internet. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see, but see if you can spot the the camera phone. It's right there in the mirror, and hopefully you can see it. I can't make it full screen. It, it wouldn't let me. But so on this one, Let's you can see. see it, and it's the phone <laughs> is being held like this that's also be okay. that gives you that narrow uh that narrow field of view here's another okay. one camera phone this one so this one they've actually got it turned sideways but still it's a camera phone you can see yeah kind of a weird angle and and the other thing is get out of the mirror get out of the mirror you don't know how many times i take photos and i there's no way to get out of the mirror but when you go through editing that's when that's when you edit that kind of stuff out. Yeah. Um, and this and was, a lot of times sorry. those images can't even be captured correctly. And it's like, okay, cool. Where's the rest of the bathroom? All I see is you and your flash. <laughs> Just, it's a, uh, it's kind of mind boggling is here's another aspect of the complaint that I said earlier about, you know, people who gripe about agents who get paid too much for nothing. It's like, well, there's a difference between a hobbyist, who does real estate on the side versus a professional such as you and I, where we do this full time. This is our livelihood. So we right. know what it takes to sell a property. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot yeah. of this stuff we, we front up, we front costs like the ph photography, the marketing, these are all upfront at expenses for us. And there's no promise to us even, even being able to sell uh, the property. Uh, so long as the, the, if it's, especially if it's not realistic. Right. A realistic listing yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean it's just it 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 boggles my mind when you know you're 
as a as a client, you know, you're selling your house, you're potentially paying six percent to agents, three percent to your agent, to your listing agent, and then they're coming in here with with this with that and taking photos. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's a it's a spray and pray if you think yes. about it. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna go ahead and take some photos. There's no composition. Yep. You're going from the outside to the inside. And you're going to start off in the master bedroom. They're going to go back outside to the pool. Right. And then you're going to go to the kitchen cabinet. And then here's a picture of the floor showing you that it's wood floor. Right. And it's like, there's no composition. There's no, no, no way to help the buyer who's searching online, which is predominantly going to be 90 over 95% of buyers right now are going to be online. And they're going to, they're going to stay away from your house because yeah. they don't, they can't understand it. The, the right. it, it, it's, it shows poorly. There's three reasons why a house um, doesn't sell. And we're focusing on one tonight. It's marketing, pricing, and condition. Well, if your marketing is poor or the photography is poor, then it shows the, a good house in a poor condition. Correct. So therefore, there's two out of the three that just bit you in a butt right. on being able to sell your house. Yep. So what Jared and I are trying to say is that if you're listing your house, is literally thousands upon thousands of dollars that you're you're paying to an agent and you're not going to vet them. Oh, I'm going to let my friend do it. They're they're brand new. It's like okay, but do they have the skill set? Do they right. have a team backing them to support the what needs to be done? Have them show you examples. Yeah, you know, make sure you make sure they bring examples. And if they don't have examples, then mm-hmm. they probably don't want to show you because they're not that good. <laughs> Yeah. And make sure that anybody can pull up an example of a house too. So make sure they yep. show you, you ask for, it, is this show me proof because you can see who the listing agent is. Yes. Yep. So make sure you show that. So whenever I do a listing presentation, I definitely showcase my capabilities through my own listings and my past sales and current sales, yep. uh, current um, activity. Yep. Yep. And let the, and let the uh, proof, the proof is in the pudding, right, Jared? That's right. Uh, let's see a couple more comments. Speaking of, uh, this is from Lisa. Speaking of pics, frustrating to see pictures that aren't realistic once you visit the home, mm. such as like a fish lens or, or something like that. So, I mean, that, that happens quite a bit, especially, so there's a couple of things to that. Um, yes, the fish lens, you know, it, it kind of distorts things or it, maybe it doesn't look at, look as good as it should or vice versa. Maybe it looks a lot better. And then you show up, you're like, well, this is nothing what I would mm-hmm. imagine. There's a couple of sides to that. So a lot of times, one of the things we can do is like in an empty house, we can do what's called virtual staging and uh, what that allows us to do. So you have an empty room and it's in, in being realistic, when a buyer comes into a home and they see an empty room, it's hard for them to imagine their stuff, where it's going to go and how it's going to fit, how it would be set up. And Mm -hmm. which is kind of weird because if you put too many things in there, then it's still hard for them to come because now it's cluttered and, and it's Mm -hmm. hard for them again to imagine how their things would be set up. And they're afraid that their items that are moving in are going to be cluttered and and everything. So, but a lot of times, so sometimes, sometimes what we do is virtual staging. So you take a photo of a room and then you can actually take furniture and put it in that room but those are just for and usually we put a little blurb on the photo or in the description we have saying to hey now. this is a a virtually yeah. staged home just for that reason yeah. like you're you know yeah. so we're not yeah. so you're not showing up to the house and saying well this doesn't look anything like it yeah so and uh as well as uh we actually have to now um i think the mls if not um the photo yeah, you, had passed that you have yep. to um dictate that the images that are virtual are virtual and i do believe in over editing and i definitely see where yes. that person is complaining you know like yep. you said the fisheye lens very distorts the thing people do panorama shots that um and then also <clears throat> a lot of our cameras are wide lens so it makes the room seem a lot larger than what it is but the reason for yes. that is so we can actually showcase the room right so um and i totally understand that that it does show you know, it's larger than what it really is. But that's also just kind of the nature of the beast a little bit. And I do believe in over editing um, as well as manipulations of say the, the grass. I see that a lot. The grass is so luscious. It's beautiful and green. You get there and it's dead. And it's like, right. what, what yep. the heck happened here? Yep. It's like, 
A virtual sky is one thing, but grass, I think you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> right. Because yep. you 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 want to you want to show truth to right. the house. Yep. You know. So over editing, yeah. I think, is a real thing you want to avoid. Yep. And in, going back to what you're talking about, so there's a lot of different lenses. So when we were talking about DSLR cameras and uh, mirrorless cameras and things like that, there's a lot of different lenses. And if so, if you're not familiar, you know you have what's called like a wide angle lens. You have like a uh, sort of your typical like 35 millimeter. And then you have like your zoom lenses to give a very basic breakdown of of the different types of lenses that you have. What most agents should be shooting with, and what I shoot with, is a wide angle lens. And this, and it's measured in in millimeters. So this is a 10 to 18 millimeter. I don't know if you can see that on there, eh, but either way, bit. it says it says 10 to 18 millimeters. So what that means is when I shoot at 10 millimeters, and that's typically what I shoot at when I'm shooting the rooms and everything. So that gives me a wide angle. Can't see it on my screen, but it gives me a wide angle of uh, a view. So you can capture the entire room. If I'm using my cell phone and literally, I wish I had uh, an example to show you, but when I was shooting, uh, shooting a house the other day, I had this, had the shot set up and I took my phone and put it up there just to kind of see what the difference would be with my phone. And I was, so mm -hmm. I was taking, I was taking a, a, a photo of the, the dining room and there's a big, nice dining room table in the center. Mm -hmm. So with my lens, I'm selling the dining room. I'm showing the entire dining room. Yeah. Uh, including the chairs and the, the room around it and the, you know, um, uh, what's that thing called where they put all the plates. I can't even think of what, like a China. Yeah, like a China, China cabinet, cabinet or something. Yeah. And so so then I put my phone up there and the only thing what I'm selling when I'm taking the picture through my phone is just the table. So, yeah. I mean, it was just and I've seen pictures like that. I actually listed a condo where some of the pictures that were on there it was like, OK, well, are you selling? Are you just selling this couch or are you selling the condo? Because it was literally just a picture of the couch. Yeah, and I was like, OK, well, if I don't know if we need to put this couch on Craigslist, but it shouldn't be on. The <laughs> Should it be so, on the MLS? Yeah, right. So it was just it's it's those kind of things. So that's where the wide angle lens comes into play. Now, there's other things uh, other. You can use other lenses to do more creative things. You know, if you're doing a zoom lens or, um, you know, you start mm -hmm. messing with things called like depth of field and, and getting those, you know, the blurry background kind of stuff. And those yeah. are. Those are fun things to do, but at a minimum, wide angle lenses is what what anybody should be shooting to or using to shoot uh, real estate photography. Right. So, and uh, yeah, those those in depth of capturing uh, those like details with the blur in the background that definitely goes with the level of the clientele that you have. So just like an, a luxury listing, you definitely go a little bit of more of a nuance. Uh, uh, and further details on particular elements such as like a stove or um, or a bathroom versus um, the whole room itself. So you want to get the whole room, but then you also want to highlight almost like a kind of like a magazine. If you flip through a magazine, sometimes you'll see the um, like a the oh my god like a dining room table and you'll have it all set up and the rest of the background is blurry like yep. and they'll just be like capturing like it it's they do things like that but it's just goes into the level of quality that goes yep. into it but the main the just the basic minimum three as of right now's world is just good photos yep. 3d tour and a video of some capacity whether it's just you outside of it saying hey i'm standing outside here my new listing xyz go take a look at it um or you're actually doing a quick walkthrough with the phone uh, of some degree. Yeah. Yep. Not everyone can confront these expenses for the unless you're like your full time. You've been in it for a long time, like like Jared and I have been. Right. Uh, another comment from Lisa. So she was asking. So we were talking about staging. So who pays? Who would pay for that staging? Um, essentially, depends that, on the staging. Yeah, it depends on the staging. If it's actual staging, there's you know typically that's going to come out of. I mean the the client's end mm -hmm. depending on what kind of house or you know sometimes if it's a high-end house sometimes the the agent will take care of that yeah. what's your what's it, your thoughts i think is based on the negotiation between the the realtor and the seller 
Right. There are realtors who already have a company they do right. on the side and right. they can go ahead. Oh, don't worry. We'll take care of this yep. for you. Or, or they'll refer a vendor or they'll split the cost. Um, and it's just, it's open to an interpretation negotiation. There's nothing set in stone on who pays for it. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at is, you know, it, it just depends. Sometimes the agent might pay for it. Sometimes, you know, the person listing yep. the house may pay for it. Um, that's actual staging, virtual staging. Mm -hmm. If, um, that I would just depend it. on, yeah, it, it depends on, um, what, what I'm being compensated on my end. So if, if I'm getting a full 3%, then, and we need to virtually stage this thing. Yeah. I'm going to throw that in there because it's going to help. It's going to help me sell your house for more money. Um, yeah. I'm going to be able to up that price a little bit. So, yep. I, I agree. I, um, when it comes to virtual staging, if I go that route, if the home is vacant, um, I definitely go ahead and just front that cost yep. uh, as part of, as part of the, it's just an additional editing, you know, additional right. service you got to pay for. Um, yep. and I'm just like, it's, I'm not going to have them pay for that. I'll just, I'll take care of it. I'm right here in the system. I'm not going to go through the whole leaps and bounds to it. Right. It doesn't make sense. Um, and Lisa mentioned, so Todd, that's her husband, uh, Todd measures by centimeters too. So I'm not really sure Lisa what you're getting at there, but um, <laughs> that... I'm not going to, uh, let's just move on past that. <laughs> I agree. Let's move past that one. <laughs> Look, oh I don't God, know the conversion so between centimeters and inches. So we're just, and, uh, or meters or millimeters or, or, or whatever it might be. I, I, let's just move yeah. on. Um, okay. So, so uh, let's explain what we offer. Yeah. Unless um, you have something else. I'm sorry. Well, so, so one of the, there are a lot of the things that we do. So we talked about what, at a minimum, what agents should offer. Yeah. Um, what Chris and I both do is we do that as well as, uh, so we're shooting high end photos. Um, we're doing, you know, the high quality of video, uh, sometimes 4k. Most of the time I start, you know, shooting the video in 4k by the time it goes through all the channels and gets out to the proper websites and everything. It's usually, you know, back down to 1080 um, on the resolution. Um, and then you've got the 3D, the Z you have Zillow 3D tours, and then you have Matterport 3D tours. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Um, property websites. Uh, what am I missing here, Chris? Uh, well, social media advertising. So, yeah. So social media and as far as digital assets, that's what we do. And then all that stuff gets translated into mm -hmm. advertisements through social yeah. media. As well as uh, print media and yes. marketing. If yep. there's a particular neighborhood that has a pretty high turnover rate and um, so chances are like your neighbors know who's looking to move to the area before it, anybody else. Yeah. So if you get the listing early enough and the photography and the marketing, um, I don't know about you, but it's it's a little bit of tricky to kind of get it all timed out because print media takes a while. It, does. it takes like a solid week, two weeks. It and does. by then the house should already be kind of listed at that point. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, my my main focus is digital assets and then yeah. digital advertising. So because that's going to get to the most amount of people the quickest versus Correct. I agree. print media and, and things like that. It's a lot of mailers. It's a lot of things like that. So it's just, yeah. it's not something I spend a whole lot of time on, um, yeah. you know, but it is still something that we do just to make sure that we cover, uh, mm -hmm. cover all the basis points. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's also what the seller wants. It's like, I want right. you to do this. I want you to do that. And it's like, and that's in your wheelhouse and it's within your capability. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Oblige. Yep. Exactly. Um, well, let's, uh, so we're talking about digital media. So one of the things I want to talk about is just how exactly we shoot a house, you know, with, uh, with our cameras. So I've got some examples here. So, um, unfortunately I can't see it on my side. Oh, you can't see them. Uh, no, I can't you, see it on my side. Can you go to the, to the live feed maybe? Every time that I try to circle back to it with all honesty, it just, it gives me a, like kind of an error. Oh, okay. so I mean, obviously people are seeing it, but for some reason it's not. When I look at my own side, I can't do it. Okay. I don't know why? Um, well, so so, so what I've got up here. <laughs> so what I've got up here is I've got a an aerial shot, 
And so when I do aerials, when I do ground photos, so we're going to talk about, let me go back to, so we're going to go back to, um, or never mind. So when we do those, <laughs> when we do those things, so I shoot in brackets of five. Uh, and what that yes. means is it's shooting uh, different exposure values on that same. So when I set my camera up, I set it for the scene, I set it for the shot, and then it takes five different exposure values. And that's what I'm going to show you an example of real quick. So that's what I've got up on the screen. Mm -hmm. So this is in particular an aerial photo that I did with my Mavic 2S or my Mavic, I'm sorry, Mavic Air 2. And I thought I had it out over here. I don't. Um, but so as I click through, you can see the different exposures. Here's a dark one. There's an even lighter one. And then there is the final, the final version. And so what that allows me to do is um, it allows us to take those photos and capture highlights and shadows and, and things like that and create one uniform lit photo, so to speak. And I'll show you a couple more examples here. So here's, um, or what were you going to say, Chris? I was going to say, just kind of capitalize on that. So that uniform image showcases, like he was saying, the the darks, the shadows, and the brights and the whites. Yep. Um, and putting that all together makes it a very cohesive, clean image. Yes. Because if you take an image, a lot of a lot of a lot of millennials they'll take a photo, and they'll immediately start editing it because they realize that you have this capability in our phones to take it and put it into uh, a cleaner adjust the brights the contrast the shadows to make it a uh, better even lit so what we're doing with the brackets of five is taking that dark exposure and all the way to that bright exposure and pulling it together to make one just beautiful image right yep um so then here's another trick that we do so this one in particular this is a condo that i shot um, and I'm actually uh, doing property management. So this is a condo that I'm uh, managing. We've just got it listed, available for rent. So if you're interested, give me a call. Um, <laughs> but so we, I went and took this photo and, and this is, it's a penthouse condo in the, the Sherwin complex. So, and it's got a really, really nice view over the ocean. So what happens a lot of times is um, when you're taking these, so the camera lens can't actually see inside the room and outside through like a glass because it's just, yeah. it doesn't work the same way as our eyes do. So you can see in the picture that I have on the screen and Chris, what it is, it's a picture of a living room and you can see the living room just fine, but you can't see through the glass uh, sliding yeah. door. It's overexposed. It's overexposed. And then there's a nice ocean right on the other side. So you want to be able to show both sides of that. And so here's, you know, the different exposures that we talked about, that bracket of, of five. And then what I do, so what I do is, and there's, there's different techniques. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I usually take a really dark, not a really dark, but I've got one up on the screen. I get it dark enough to where now the camera can see out of that window. It's no longer overexposed. However, the living room is really dark now. So, yeah. so, but this next picture here, this is the resulting picture from that. So you have a really nice, evenly lit uh, living room. And then you can also see out of that glass, the sliding glass yeah. door, you can see the ocean, you can see the clouds, everything yep. is uniform, just as if you were standing there and you're looking at it with your yep. eyes. Yeah, I like to call it a window pool. Yes. So you're pulling yep. the window and you're you're bringing it, it back into it. Exactly. So it's, there's a couple, like you said, a couple ways to be able to capture that. And to be able to do that um, definitely changes things. Because you can, if without that window pool, you're just staring at a room with a very, very bright white spot. Yes. And it's, it's not appealing to the eyes. You can't really make it out. It's distracting. Yep. So being able to do that and one, one of the things that we've learned to do is that window pool and it yep. just changes the whole dynamic yep. whatsoever and makes a very uh, beautiful shot. Yes. And it's, and it's very important when you have really that nice view. views, you know, especially yep. on a penthouse looking over the ocean and yes. the water is nice, you know, it's a nice color and you want to be able to mm -hmm. show that having just a white blur does 
does it no good. No. It does it no yep. satisfaction. So I'm doing disservice to the view. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Into the, um, to your homeowner. Yes. Just trying so to sell then, it. Here's another example. Uh, got the different exposures and then this last shot where you can see, uh, again, an evenly lit room and then you can see out the window. Mm. Um, the It's very easy to do with still shots. Uh, videography, I'm not too familiar of a way to be able to expose inside as well as the outside. Yeah. Um, it's really difficult to do. Yeah, um, so video has got to be a little bit little bit different you got to have high-end yeah. cameras yeah and you Those gotta have they <laughs> they do they get um you know five thousand plus Thousands. you know dollars yeah. and so th there are ways to do it there's different you know settings and things that you can do to try to limit um that overexposure through a window but it's it's never there's a lot more you can do with still photos than you can mm. do with video video is a little bit more difficult well so think about you have one photo that you have to edit versus in a video you have thousands of frames thousands of photos that you have to edit each one of those so there's there's a lot more there's a lot more to the video side of things um favorite sound in the world now yeah, there you go did you hear it i did i love it yeah. i'm gonna have to Crack mine open. This is a new bottle I got sitting behind me. Yeah, you got got Glenn Levitt. Is that what I'm reading? Yeah, it's a, is that uh, what I see? It's a Glenn Levitt. It's a Founders Reserve. Oh man, it's good stuff. It's um not crazy expensive, and I don't feel guilty if I throw a couple ice cubes in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of these like scotches, they say you should put a, like a cube or two in there so the water actually helps the flavor. Yes. Yep. Oh, I've been wise, lying my whole life. <laughs> a very wise um, professional Scotch drinker, or whatever you want to call him, um, he was telling me he's you know we we're talking about you know putting the drops of water into your whiskey and you kind of yes. swirl it around and and it and it does it changes the flavor and and everything. But he asked me a question. He's you know he said all right, you put the drop in there and and he asked I'm gonna see if you know Chris how long are you how long are you supposed to swirl the whiskey no clue uh, i'll guess uh, maybe 10 seconds you only swirl it till somebody sees you and then they think you know what you're doing and then you take a sip you cheers okay. and you take a sip so you swirl it until uh -huh. somebody sees you and then you take your sip so good to know yeah i'll make sure i do that <laughs> swirl until somebody sees you okay that's right i can remember that so in other words it doesn't matter how much you swirl it. It's, it's going to mix in and you're just most people that are doing it because this guy, I mean, he had thousands of dollars worth of scotch in his house. He's been, you know, he's been studying this stuff, sort of like a sommelier for for wine. That's and awesome. he said it, it it really does nothing when you when you swirl it, because by the time you drip it in there and you get it up to your mouth, it's it's already mixed already, in. The molecules are already changing and yeah. and everything. So that's awesome. but I, just, I thought that was I thought that was funny. So, um, so I'm going to stick on a little on whiskey here for a little bit. I just started to get into whiskeys like in the okay. past like a uh, month and a half, like right. really started to get to, cause beer is just starting, yeah. starting to lose it for me. And, mm -hmm. uh, I end up having to drink a lot of it and just not, not healthy for me. So I've switched over to whiskey cause I definitely have enjoyed it more. And, uh, since then I have discovered some awesome stuff and yes. tonight I'm actually drinking something simple, the Knob Creek, uh, single barrel uh select bourbon oh nice okay yep and nice. so pretty much we have a local store that i like to go to called legacy liquors um off 1792 and uh so this one was uh barreled in 2011 and picked by the store in 2020 it's cool. a 120 proof it's delicious very so nice remember the bottle i'll have to uh, uh is it, it over the, what's that is it fairly cheap or is it yeah, it's a, like the it, it's 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 a it's a, it's a, it's a family owned. They have multiple locations, Legacy Liquor. So their prices are not uh, jacked up where you would find Total Wine to be cheaper or ABC Liquor to be cheaper. Like these oh, prices okay. are super competitive to Total Wine and, and uh, ABC. Oh, very and, nice. Um, I've gotten so they've introduced me. They're great people. They've introduced me to some amazing um, whiskeys, and um, I got a bottle of uh, McKellen Twelve sitting outside 
there and um i've gotten some japanese whiskey that just blew my mind and have you heard of whistle pig no okay wh- look up whistle pig they got a six year called the piggyback they got a 10 year in 18 and then a thing called the boss hog i think that's everything that i'm thinking of but over the weekend i got to try the uh, 18 year and um oh, wow there was no burn yeah there was no burn whatsoever yep. it was the smoothest whiskey i've ever had in my yep. life yeah those are nice so, i'm not a big uh i'm not a big smoky fan like if it gets too like it's been in the oak barrel too long or or anything mm. it's i'm not a big fan of that like some of those uh what's those johnny walkers and and things oh. some of those just get overly smoky for me this one is just it's not smoky it's just it's pretty smooth so haven't had glenn love yet no no it's good it's stuff. on my list yep. it's on my list i have a running list <laughs> okay yep things to get i'm, I'm building out my uh my bar right now my, there you uh, go nice my liquor yep. nice i'm oh, pretty sure uh, <clears throat> all right uh, let's get back on track here <laughs> all right yeah i just so you, um i sent you the oh, link yeah. to to the video maybe see if you can click on that to see if it comes up or is it still giving okay. you it's still giving yeah, you i error. definitely want to be able to see the images like everything yeah. that you're saying i um i i can i know exactly what you're talking about and i can right pretty much commented off off the top of the cuff but give me a second let me all right well while he's looking at that so um i do have some examples of some shots that uh that i've done i think i put some of yours in here too there was so many and it okay. uh i don't remember now but is it coming up I'm... for you Oh, it's not. Unfortunately, no, so it just keeps giving me an issue. I think it's like known that I'm trying to, I'm being a part of this broadcast. I don't know. It's being a, it's being a jerk. Okay. All right. I'll have um, to go back, but just tell me what the, uh, the image is. Cause I sent you everything. So I know what, what it right. is. Well, these are um, when I get to, I think I added yours in here. I can't remember now. Um, but these are just some examples. So this, this is one that that I took over in Inverness uh, for another agent. So when I go out and do photos, I take my my mirrorless. So I use a, a Sony mirrorless camera, and uh, it's an A6500. That's the other thing I wanted to talk about with you, Chris. See what kind of equipment you were using. Okay. But um, so what I'm what I look for in when I'm shooting a house, especially a house like this. This this particular property was a. Uh, it was a two or three million dollar property. And so, but when I'm shooting these properties, I'm trying to find sort of a story or so this particular property, Chris, it's in the back of the house, there's a nice pool, there's a huge house, and then there's like a little stream that comes down in the front. And mm-hmm. um, so I, I'm trying to capture What's the address? All, you know, it's, um, shoot i don't even remember 2040 east hampshire i think it is i think it's it's already been sold but Mm -hmm. um it uh here's a couple other examples this this photo here so i did it this was getting in towards the evening so i did something that's called a long exposure oh that's nice oh wow it just started just started raining um so this one has a long exposure. If you can see the lake or that little pond there, it's kind of got like a glassy blur yeah. effect to it. So what happens when you do a long exposure, what that means is you've opened up, you've increased your shutter speed to um, almost a second or maybe a second or more, whatever, you know, whatever's needed for the shot. And then what happens is it gives that, you know, the waves coming through that pond, it gives it a, a uh, sort of a glass blurred kind of look to it yeah so, the greatest example everyone has seen these photos of like streams or rivers and instead of it looking like actual water it looks like everything is crystal clear but the mm-hmm. water itself looks like a giant blur so mm-hmm. the shutter is just remaining open for a prolonged period of time so as it's staying open the water is still running so it's just blurring an image and that's what's happening here right um that you can see and if you even look at the trees if you focus on the trees you can see that the wind had manipulated a lot of the greenery forcing the palms to sway so this is still a really cool shot because no one only those who have photography eyes can can spot it right away right other than that it's a beautiful shot right thank you 
And, you know, but then the goal with these kind of photos is to have these, these gotcha photos as, as you, if you want to call them that, but the ones, you know, so when somebody's scrolling, cause when you're scrolling, you're looking at houses, you're just scrolling by, scrolling by. And then as soon as you see a photo that catches your eye, you're like, hold on a second. I need to go back yep. and look at that again. And so what you're hoping to do is with these, with these style photos is draw them in to to look at more and then look at the details of the house and then go into your 3d tour and your video and and all that so really your photos are i don't know what do you think i mean in my opinion your photos are almost your front line your you know what's going to initially draw somebody in so the photos are almost the most important the most you know the most crucial part of of the marketing of the digital asset i couldn't agree more and Although like video is reigning, like it reigns like almost like supreme in terms of like the social media platforms. Mm-hmm. But when people are surfing through Realtor.com, Zillow, or your local MLS, the first thing that's stopping you is the actual photo itself. That's the first engagement. So that first photo needs to really stand out in a very positive manner to be able to click merit a click. Especially if it's in the price point, the size rooms, the size of the house, the location, all these things they're already looking at. So if that image stands out, they're going to be looking through it for the first three, four clicks, five clicks, six clicks, all the way to the end. And then they're like, honey, I want to go see this house. Right. So, And then if you have um, the video walkthrough, um, or a 3D walkthrough, that's just going to solidify it more because then they're able to digitally walk through the house through the 3D. Zillow has this, Matterport has this. Um, Matterport, I would argue, is the better quality in terms of a 3D walkthrough. However, yeah. majority of buyers are on Zillow and they right. have their own walkthrough that just seems to hit the masses more. Yep. More so. Yep. I agree. Um, Lisa just asked, how's the whiskey? Delicious. The whiskey. Which one? Is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I need an ice cube on mine. Yeah. So, but I'm mean, drinking it neat. Like, I am too. I usually have a couple ice cubes, but this works too. Usually after the, mm-hmm. I can do a couple ice cubes on the first one. And then after that, I'm okay. I can go neat. <laughs> yeah. Just get that palette coated a little bit. You're exactly. Good to go. Um, let me you show you a great job more. with this photo, man. With that, I'm still going through um, Iverson here on Hampshire. That's oh, a okay. beautiful house. Well shot. Uh, so in some of the interior photos. So here's another one that I did for. Um, this was the staircase right through the front door. So mm-hmm. another thing, what I'm looking for when I'm doing photography is you're trying to either have those lead-in lines, and you know, there's that's a whole another. You know, how to shoot photography is a whole another. Uh, podcast. Yeah, I episode. agree. Let's, it, that's not too far into the weeds. <laughs> uh, but for for this one in particular, that's on the screen. So there's other things that you look for is sym- uh, symmetry. And with the staircase, that's kind of what I was going for. Is you have the staircase right in the middle, and then you have equal things on both sides to kind of help weigh it out. So almost mm-hmm. if you were going to put it on a scale, it's going to be balanced right in the center. And yep. and that's kind of what I was going for on that one. Yeah, if you go a couple more images, you can actually see, for anybody who's kind of following along, the address is 2040 East Hampshire Street in Iverness. And you can go to, say, like, image 23, where it's the top of the staircase, looking at the chandelier down. And you can just see it's so aesthetically pleasing to the eye when you're looking at this, because it's centered everything itself around it. So the people who are the architect of this house, they knew they wanted everything to be cemented. Symmetrical. Uh, I lost you. Chris, I lost you. All right. So, um, yeah, Chris, I can't hear you anymore. I don't know what happened. I don't know if maybe you want to click out and then rejoin. But um, so moving on, uh, these are a couple more photos. So this and this one in particular here again, this was the master bedroom. Again, looking out the window, um, we talked about how to shoot the photos and it was, you know, it's a blur, but then you do that dark shot 
and then you're able to see out the window. Another thing that I usually do is a screen, a TV screen replacement. So if you see the the uh, what's on the the TV screen, that's actually a picture of the outside. So that's another. Yep, can you I me? can hear you now. Um, so that's another. That's a picture that I took of the outside of the pool, and then you overlay that onto the TV screen. So it's kind of an added bonus when somebody's flipping through. Uh, pictures on a particular listing and then they're like wait a second that looks like the outside and so it's it's kind of a nice little surprise when people are going through the house and they and they see those kind of things um let's see what else another one here so then this was kind of a fun shot you know with the pool table uh and then the pool table is in focus and then kind of everything is is blurred in the background so i was kind of messing with what we call depth of field and what what happens is everything in the foreground becomes you know almost hyper focused, and then everything in the background is is sort of blurred out. And that's kind of what I was doing with this photo here. You got the pool pool table here in the foreground; it's it's in focus, and then everything is just slightly out of focus uh, beyond that. Let's see what else we got. So those are some examples of the interior uh, photography that we did. For that house and then um mm -hmm. the next thing is uh twilights yeah. do you do twilights at all of your yeah regardless of price point really um and, and i kind of say that respectfully because um I, I recently listed one that was uh in a low 200s and it just it just screamed um needed a twilight because the the grounds was so just so pretty that it was just like and manicured. I was like, this has to have a twilight. So I am a big fan of twilight, especially if the landscape is like flawless or requires right. it. Yep. And what I'm talking about. So here's a couple examples of twilights. This is on, this is that same house. This is the backside where the pool is and you got everything lit up. You've got the sky, um, you know, a nice glow to the sky and everything kind of that mm -hmm. sunset feel, some clouds coming across, kind of wisping across the, the sky there um so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about twilights why isn't that going to the next one there we go so then here's so here's an example of so chris what i have up there is the before photo so this is a photo of another house i did yep. in inverness so you have the before photo and it's kind of dark it's kind of you know there's some it, you can't really tell what's going on and then Here's the after photo. So then everything is lit up. Again, you got the sky with the the orange feel. You have the glow from the outside uh, house lights and everything like that. So it's there's a lot going on. But you know, mm -hmm. to most people, they just see it and they're like, "Oh, that's a really cool photo." To other photographers, they see it and they're like, "Oh, wow, that you know, they actually put some work into it and and they made it look." really nice however yep. my goal with this photo is to capture somebody who's just scrolling really fast and they're like oh what was that that that's like a professional that that's a really good looking photo let me go see more of that and then they come in and that draws them into the house and then they're like oh this is really nice i want to buy a two million dollar house now <laughs> yeah right i think we all want to buy a two million dollar house <laughs> at right, some point right. i think that's a life goal for many people yep yeah um it's completely attainable too here's another before and after photo this was of the pool in the back with the uh, the lights on on the, the giant porch at this house uh here's another one from that uh, 2040 east hampshire this is the twilight um if you still have it up chris i do the the one with the um it has a fountain in front and then it's got yes. the house in the background and again yep. long exposure the sky because it was getting dark and so when we shoot twilights there's a couple different ways to do it the way i did this one was uh the more difficult way or you actually have to your wait first for, way right you actually have to wait for the twilight you have to wait for that time of day and that's just when the sun is just going down below the high the horizon you have about 30 maybe 40 minutes of sunlight where you can start getting these kind of photos Mm -hmm. And then, so that's the way I've, I've shoot most of my stuff. However, there's kind of a, I don't want to call it a cheat way, but there is an alternative way. It's... If, if you can't be there, you know, after suns, after sunset or, um, 
there's a couple of things, you know, there's, you can take it during the day, but there's, there's still some requirements. You, you don't want to have any shadows on the ground and, and things like that. And there's still some technique to it. You can't just go shoot a photo and then poof, you have a, a twilight. You still have to do some editing, uh, even more editing on when you're cheating, when you're doing them during the yeah. day versus if you're doing them properly, you know, and they just, they come out way better if you just wait. It, until, it does. Until anybody who's in it. Anybody who's in the music or like kind of grew up knows that all music was recorded on tape and nowadays mm -hmm. is recorded digitally. So think of this right here, what he's done. And I can tell just from looking at the fountain that he did it analog. So essentially you just sit there, you take the photo, you take your brackets and then, or a, a long prolonged exposure, wait two minutes, take another one, wait another yep. two minutes, all the yep. way until the sun goes down. Yes. And then you combine the image to, or, or if you want the sky of this one here and, or you want the lights of this and you yes. blur it all together. Yep. Whereas the digital aspect is like, like he, like Jerry was saying, you take it during the day and then essentially you just do virtual manipulations. You change the background, right. you darken the color tones um, a little bit, or just the contrast with the brightness. And then you start adding lights where lights are put. So if you're looking at the house here, they would add lights with the starburst effect and they would go in and to turn on all the lights and, but it's really just a screen and you can just see it. Whereas this is just a beautiful shot of just patience and every couple of minutes taking a shot. A prolonged yep. shot. So yep. this is the analog way. Yes. The nice, warm, beautiful way versus the digital way. Yep. Which is obvious. <laughs> yes. And here's, here's a couple <laughs> more that I did. And here's another one of of the back. So this one is it's the one I've got two chairs, the patio chair, the pool chairs sitting in the back. So it's kind of you get that symmetrical look to it, and you got the pool, and then you got the house. And so this one, you know, again, it's, it's done sort of in the same way that Chris just described. Um, the hard part with these is again, you only have about 30 or 40 minutes. So for me, and this is, it's not a small property. So for me to, to shoot this one and get the exposure that I, I wanted, and then I've got to grab the camera. I'm literally running right. from the back of the house to the front of the house, setting up and setting up my shot again. So I, I've already mapped out what shots I wanted to take. Mm -hmm. So because you don't have time to, to go and put your camera in five different places and figure out that no. you can't, you don't have the shot, you know, that you want, you have to know exactly where you're going to put your camera. So you have to pre-plan a little bit. Yep. And, and you have to memorize the image on the screen too. You yes. can't be off by a little bit. It's got to be like right. almost perfect. Yep. So, I mean, you know, cropping does help with that a little bit, yes, but it does. Um, <laughs> so, uh, here's another before and after. Yeah. I've had to do that uh, a couple of times where we just run from the backyard to the front yard, backyard to the front yard, yep. backyard to the front yard. And it's yep. just like for 30 minutes, by any of it, you're drenched in, in your own sweat. And being that this is Florida, if you're doing it during the summertime, yep. you're loaded with mosquito bites and sweat. Yes. Um, Fun times. Fun know. times. <laughs> we are uh, so we're running up on about an hour right now. So let's uh, let's okay. push through the rest of the stuff here. Um, aerial shots. What do you? What kind of drone do you use, Chris? Um, I actually use the Office drone, which is a Phantom Two. I think. Okay. We uh, a Phantom. So yep. that's the drone. Um, I actually don't own my equipment. I actually uh, lend out the equipment from our office. Yep. And so um, it's a Canon D60, and that's the one that I use, or the Canon D80, whichever is in there. That is what I use for the photo for the photos. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a Ryko that helps with the 3D. I have a Matterport subscription, so I pay ten bucks a month for that. And then I also leverage the same thing for Zillow. And then we have our own gimbal system here in the office, and I use that for say video with the cell phone or um i'll use the camera itself and go through that route gotcha okay so, but definitely um, it's by the end of the year i'm looking to get my own equipment yep yep so one of the things so a lot of agents don't actually do their own drone shots because they're not certified um that is a big deal you have to be certified if you're gonna do any sort of aerial work with a drone you have to be certified it's called part 107 uh, certification is done through the FAA. And if you're mm -hmm. not certifi certified and you get caught, I mean, there's pretty hefty it's, fine. Yeah. Uh, that it's, could come not, with that. 
it's not a um it's not a felony is it i i don't know um but they could but they I, could definitely find you and they yeah. can charge you um yeah. for sure and especially if, if you don't know what you're doing as far as flying in airspace i mean aside from the fine if you were to crash into a another airplane or or something then i mean you're just talking about all kinds of issues so you really have to be oh, familiar yeah. so again there's there's just a handful of of agents that are actually certified uh, drone pilots. I'm one of them, Chris. Obviously, you you're one of them, right? Or do you have your no? Oh, okay. No, I'm doing it very. Uh... <clears throat> Thanks for calling me out there, Jared. Oh, shoot. My bad. <laughs> no, Sorry, kidding. I have Shane. Shane is certified. He's a little, yeah. he's a colleague of ours. He's certified. He just got his uh, license. Okay. So he's been doing a lot of my drones lately, just because I don't want to get caught. Gotcha. But. Before then, I was just before they really cracked down on drones. Yeah, I was I was doing it myself. Yeah, so yep. so I actually do a trick now um, in order to get high up. Uh, yep. I actually, I think Jared, you have a couple of my photos where it seems very high, like where it should be a drone. And what I'm doing is that I'm backing my car up into the the place I want to be, and I stand on my trunk, and yes. I I extend the camera as far as I can, as long as I can. And I turn the the the, ex, the brackets to ten seconds, and I sit there and I hold it up, and I just stand still until it takes all five shots. And so it gets a very high angle, and it comes to like a beautiful, looks like an aerial position. So that's that's my method. And if I don't have access to it, so if I'm in the backyard, I'll go ahead and actually just kind of do the same thing. Just stand here, stand still, and just take the shot. Is it the one? Um... Well, there's so I have one up here. It's of the back. It's in the backyard. I think you did a twilight of this one too, and it looks yes. sort of like an elevated shot, yeah. almost like maybe you you uh, had it on your tripod and then you pushed it up. Mm -hmm. You held it up. Is that yeah? If it's a beige or like a uh, a beige house with a uh, a patio, yep. in it and it's twilight. Yeah, that's that's the one that I had thirty offers on in four days. Oh wow! Dang. Yeah, and offers. if you. So that one's 630 Rookery Avenue in Deltona. So if you actually go inside the house for anybody that want, that's curious, there's nothing glamorous about this house. Nothing. Right. Really, it's not updated. It's got carpet. It's got original um, bathrooms and um, kitchen. Um, and it's just immaculately maintained. It's super clean. And the photos kind of spoke for itself. I did everything that we've we've talked about so far with the exception of the aerials. I just kind of faked it. Right. Um, but it got the message across and because of that and over 90% of buyers are online, I got the draw. Yep. And I got them. I got yeah. them. We were at 235 listed list price, 235 contract price, 260 with the appraisal waived. So it doesn't matter what the appraisal comes in at the, the sellers are going to make an additional 25,000 more than what they originally had hoped for. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so. I mean, it, it's, it's crazy how, how it makes that big yeah. difference. It does. Oh. Cause imagine if I took regular cell phone photos, I'm sure I would have gotten a couple offers, but if not at least one, but because right. of the level of the quality that we take into it, that was the result. Yeah. That, that's just indisputable. Yeah. Um, well, so then one of the things I want to talk about was just, Sorry how much rant. it actually oh no no worries um no. how much it actually costs to or the brag to to no. do all of these photos so so here's so i do um photos on the side for a lot of real estate agents my company uh dronified pilots is you know here's a plug on my own show for dronified pilots so if you're a real estate agent and you need some photography i do it and so most agents will spend Typically, right around three, maybe four hundred bucks pushing it on, and typically they'll get photography. Um, sometimes aerials, they'll have to. I'll have to kind of push them on, uh, depending on the area. I mean, sometimes it's it's easy. I shot one house where uh, all they wanted was photography. I showed up and I'm like, dude, you're six houses down from the intercoastal here, from the Halifax River. I can't capture that from the ground. I have to capture that from the from the air mm -hmm. so you're crazy not to get them however you're the one listing the house so if you don't want them that's up to you so i talked them into it um so 
Uh, so you got ground photos, we got aerials. Um, by the time you get into video and Zillow 3D and the Matterport 3D and then doing a property website, and what I mean by that is your property has its own dedicated uh, website where it's like, you know, 123fakestreet.com and it has all the digital media, has all the information about the house and it helps with uh, coming up on search engine like Google and stuff. Um, and it also is only your house. It's not Zillow where there's your house and then five, you know, thousand other houses right below it that people can go to. Once they're on your website, yeah. it's only your house. Um, so by the time you get done with all that, you're easily spending, you know, like I said, most agents are spending three to 400 bucks. When I come in there and when, when Chris comes in there and we do it ourselves, that allows us to save you know, and we're doing the full work. So let me, let me tell you what it would cost to do the full works. And I'm talking anywhere from $800, depending on what kind of, and a lot of that depends on what kind of video and the size of the house mm -hmm. and things like that. But I'm talking 800 to $2,000 on some of these houses, depending on, on what you're doing. But, and if it's, you know, high end photos, uh, the high end video Matterport, 3d zillow 3d um and then you're doing twilights which means you have to be there after you know through sunset mm -hmm. so that's added cost because now you know you have to be there for that time so you're talking anywhere from 800 to literally two thousand dollars on on just a single house the nice thing is what i do what chris does is we do all that stuff so guess what we don't have to spend we don't have to spend two thousand dollars on all these digital assets because we do them ourselves. Yeah. So, who do you think is going to do more marketing? The person that just saved two thousand dollars, or the person that only wanted to spend? He didn't even want to spend three hundred dollars, but I talked him into it because mm -hmm. I told him he needs aerials. So now he's spending three hundred bucks on on yeah. his house. So, who do you think is going to spend more money on? on pushing all that media out there. And I'm going to take pride yeah. in it because this is a house that I'm shooting. I'm, I'm listing yeah. and I'm going to, I want to, not only do I want to help you sell your house, but I also want to brag a little bit and show the kind of photos that I'm taking and show the video. I want to show it off to other people. Yeah. And it just shows its quality, its consistency, its reputation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's just, so going back to what we originally talked about, when you're interviewing those real estate agents, um, at a minimum, at, just ask them what kind of what kind of digital assets are they providing, mm -hmm. and what kind of marketing. Show me proof. Of, exactly. Have them show you proof. And if it's if they're not if they're not doing more than just photos and video, at least give me a call or give Chris a call and yeah. let just talk to. Them. I mean, we're not gonna yeah. we're. You don't have to to use this as an agent, but at least give us a call, give us an opportunity to show you the difference between what yeah. we're going to do and what another agent yeah. is going to do. Yeah, and so a lot of people forget that we're actually public servants. We're licensed by the state. Correct. So therefore, we're actually a public servant. So there's there are plenty of people who are self interest. Like that doesn't matter where you go, no matter what job you do. But those who such as Jared and myself and many others, we take pride in the quality as well as the care. So like, it doesn't hurt to reach out and say, Hey, like I'm interviewing these agents. I like this person. He's a good person. I'm gonna give him a shot, but he doesn't have the quality photos. Um, like what, what, what should we be looking for? Like just pick our brains. It, it makes no difference to us as a professional to pick our brains. And if you're going to go with us or not. Right. Yeah. You know? So at least which, just, which, uh, which agent were you talking about? Are you talking to me? Or are you talking about Chris? Because we can give you our, our numbers, but if you're talking about another agent, then, well, I, I don't, I can't help you there. <laughs> Come on, man. We're just going to backtrack on everything I just said. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, let me, uh, so going back to, so again, doing all those things, one thing we haven't shown an example of is, let me just show you what Matterport. So, um, Chris, let me sh let me send you the link for it here. Okay. 
if it'll hopefully it'll pop up there for you um yeah let's see here all right so i'm on uh angel penthouse the angel penthouse this is the the condo that uh i'm managing and so this is the matterport let me go full screen on this so this is matterport Matterport. what and you'll see yeah i'm sorry like and Jerry, can you also share uh, or right after this, or we'll do a side by side contrast with, between this and Zillow? Do you have one for Zillow? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay, definitely pull that up, and you and you people will be able to tell instantly the the quality difference between Matterport and Zillow. Like the bare minimum should be Zillow, but to have uh, Matterport just provides that clarity, uh, uh, quality, and it shows one hundred percent. Yeah. So. so it- the way Matterport works is it it allows you to go through the house and literally as you're standing there, you can see how I'm scrolling around on my screen and you see these little circles on the ground. If I click that, it takes me as if I just walked into the next room and then I can walk through the entire house. The other thing I can do is I can view dollhouse. So with that, I see basically the floor plan. I can see all the walls, all the rooms and how they're separated. And I can scroll around and see how everything is laid out. And then you have the top down view, which gives you that, you know, typical or that uh, uh, floor plan view, that top down floor plan view. The other nice thing that you can do, and it's maybe not as important on this particular house, but you can actually take measurements. Yes, I was just going to say that. Yes. So you can take measurements. So where if I wanted to see if my piece of furniture or my chairs or how long this breakfast bar was, for example, I'd click here and then I drag it and I did it in the wrong spot, but I drag it across and that says, you know, right about nine feet long. So and that's that's about right. It's I, you know, I, I haven't gone out and actually tested to see how accurate it is, but I imagine if they uh, advertise it, it's probably it's, accurate. Yeah, it's got to be accurate to to a degree, 100%, within at least a foot. And the cool thing about Matterport as well is it actually creates a floor plan. So you can actually see the dollhouse view and see the measurements and mess with the measurements. But there's also um, an added expense to where the camera itself will create the dimensions in a floor plan. So it looks like an actual blueprint of the space just yes. as it is yep. from dimensions to dimensions and it'll, it'll all be labeled as well and it's the coolest thing matterport is one of the coolest things that has ever come to light and matterport was first of its kind before zillow 3d tour Correct. zillow 3d tour had to jump on the bandwagon because this was just something mind-blowing and it shows yeah. like it like i'm looking i'm messing around on the floor plan right now and it's just so cool yeah <laughs> it's the coolest thing since sliced bread yep but then here's the thing, there's added cost to this. So this is yes. this is going into that, you know, we're spending upwards of $2,000 to get all the digital assets. So Matterport, it's not cheap. You know, the actual camera costs uh, right around $3,000 for the actual yeah. Matterport camera. And then on top of that, you have to buy a subscription service, which costs mm-hmm. anywhere from the low end of, I think, about $10 a month but then the next step up yeah. is I think about $65, $70 a month. So there's an added yeah. cost to that that we have to maintain. It's not like we can turn it on and turn it off uh, to Correct. save, you know, to save 60 bucks or whenever yeah. we're done listing your house, we have to continuously pay for that. So, yeah. so it's, it is a service that's provided to us that we, mm-hmm. that we pay for, but there's a lot of agents that don't want to spend. Don't want to. Yeah, they're way. afraid to reinvest into the business, and and correct, you know that's just the difference again to between a professional and a hobbyist. And the thing is, like we keep up this expense uh, because it's one, it's cloud based, so we have access to it no matter what, and it just takes up more um, more space on their servers that they need to cont- continuously build out more and more for people to have to have access to this on a whim because this is proof right here. This is actual proof. Like here's all the three D's that I did for the past three years, you know, and, and that's, and keeping up with that expense and creating new, new uh, doll houses and new floor plans. is just all a continued added expense that professionals pay for and they're happy to pay for it. Yep. Now here's i I've got your, um, 
your Zillow 3D up here. So this is Chris's house that, that he listed. What was the address on this one? Uh, which one? Is it um, Rookery or is it um, Front Creek? I don't see an address oh, on. on here, uh, but uh, it's it's Front Creek. Okay. So, so yeah, so he thirty three South Front Creek. Yeah. Okay. So the main difference Sorry. between Zillow, so Zillow is only through Zillow platform, uh, the Zillow 3D, and it's it's through the Zillow product. You can share it, but it's it does not quite as interactive. The, the, the other thing, actually, let me <clears throat> mention this. I thought it was pretty cool with Matterport. You can actually, you know, the Oculus um, virtual reality headset, you can actually use it with Matterport. So you put on the virtual reality headset and then actually walk through a house, uh, which is it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, yeah. So but this is the Zillow 3D. So it's a little bit different layout. Uh, you have the arrows down here that allow you to navigate through the room, but mm -hmm. there's no um, floor plan view. There's no dollhouse view. There's no way to do yeah. measurements. Um, so pretty and much, you know, and then the go ahead. It's like borderline fisheye and it, it takes everything takes a little split second for it to load and for yes. you to be able to look around. It's not so as, like that's just not as crisp. Yeah is a significant difference and it's almost yes. like it only has one point of focus until you actually move it around there thus creates that um that fisheye kind of concept yes so you can see the difference in zillow 3d home tour is completely free to an agent the only thing you have to purchase is um a 3d camera and that's that's essentially it right. whereas a matterport it's worth its weight you know 100 percent yeah, uh, and gold just through quality wise. The only yeah. thing that's a burden is that you're only going to get the Matterport through, say, particular website um, or its own property address, whereas the public is stuck with this Zillow right. tour. Right. Yeah. And it's like I said, but nonetheless, it's still something that mm -hmm. as an agent, you know, me, I do the Zillow 3D as well yeah. as the Matterport 3D. It's it's a little bit extra work. You have to go through the house twice, twice. <laughs> in order to get both of the things done. However, it's well worth it because I mean, let's let's face it, Zillow gets just millions of people coming through their website. So if I don't have, you know, some awesome photos on there and I don't have video on there and I don't have uh the the Zillow 3D tour, then Zillow isn't going to promote my my listing. So whenever I list things, like one of my last listings I had, so they had it, um, they had it listed as a for sale by owner. This was one over in Venetian Bay. They had it listed as for sale by owner. It was on the market for about 22 days. They had about 1500, uh, I think it was about 1500 views. So what I did is I took a snapshot because I knew as soon as I got a hold of it, the, the amount of views I was going to have on just Zillow, uh, was going to be significantly higher. So they had about 1,500. I took a snapshot in the same amount of days, 22 days later, I had just over 6,000 views in the same amount of time. So going mm -hmm. back to that point is the reason I did is because Zillow promotes, they, it goes, you know, they have an algorithm and it promotes, you know, listings that have nice photos that have, uh, that uses all the, the platforms. So Photos, video, and the Zillow 3D. And as long as they're good mm -hmm. quality, your listings are going to be at the top. And that's what that's how I was able to get so many views on this particular listing. Yep. Yep. So. And that's why uh, also with Facebook as well, like doing live videos is promoted first because they just want people to get onto that versus, you know, Instagram live. Or, mm -hmm. and, and that's where we're kind of going to the younger generation. Right. And as an agent, we should be going after two generations, at least two right. generations, the millennial right. generation that's now the predominant buyers. And then the, the, I hate to say the, the, the boomer generation that is predominantly selling at this time yep. as well yep. as buying, but yep. they're the predominant sellers. The median age of a seller in the nation is 55. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. So, um, what else, what else what we got? Are we, what are we missing? Oh, he, well, going back to here's some stats I'm throwing up here on the page here for Matterport. Okay. So, millennial buyers now comprise 35% of all new home buyers on the market. 
uh, which means a higher demand for engaging, interactive, and mobile-ready content from real estate professionals. Mm. Uh, In the next next two years, 80% of millennials will seek to purchase a home according to that's according to trulia that's almost then, 67 million prospective buyers in the next what how many years in the next uh two years i'm not sure when okay. this came out but let's see um, um i'm at the the beginning ages of, t- of the millennial so because i'm born in 89 yeah. 89 so i got to experience beef pre um internet and then mm-hmm. i got to see the development to what it is today yeah so um, I would say, what's that? 31, 32, down to 28, 29. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know how the whole generation yeah. thing, I don't know if it's a 10-year thing or Yeah, I don't know how more. it breaks down. I I feel like sometimes I'm on the edge of, I don't even know what, what I'm at. <laughs> Man, you got to see the rotary phone. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I used to have a, a actually I had a Mickey Mouse uh rotary phone at one point in my oh, life. Oh, that's great. And uh but let me see if I got any more comments. If, if there's not any more comments. I guess if you're going to be listing your house, you do not be afraid to ask your friend because there are over 20,000 licensed agents in the state of Florida. Everyone yes. has got a freaking has got a license. Yes. What you need to find out is how how active are they? Are they full time or part time? Mm-hmm. I'm all about giving a friend the 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 chance, you know. And chances are okay, but if you're serious about selling and making the most money, you have to go for a professional. And what you can do is ask for them to give a referral to your friend. Right. Give a referral yeah. to your friend. Yep. That way, one, you're getting the professional services, and you yep. get to help out your friend. Yes. So yeah. there's no harm in that. Yep. Yeah, and and typically that referral fee is is 25% of Yeah, 25 to 30. Yep. Yeah, 25 to 30% depending on which side of the commission, yeah, for sure. Yep. And I I see that quite a bit where, you know, it's like, "Oh, I've got a I've got a friend or my neighbor is is an agent and, you know, I feel bad if I don't use mm-hmm. them." But so what you what you really have to think about when it comes to choosing your agent is essentially, I mean, it's for most people, it's it's a personal thing when they're they're selling their house, so and they want to go with somebody that they're comfortable with. However, mm-hmm. that's not always going to be the best thing. You have to look at it as this is a business transaction, mm-hmm. and you you want to get, you know, when you bought the house, you didn't want to pay a lot of money for it, so you wanted an agent that was going to get you a really good deal. Now that you own the house, you want an agent that is going to sell it for the most amount of money possible. And you have to look at it like a business transaction where you yeah. you don't, you know, if you're running a business with uh, people that aren't trying to make money and they're not really serious about it and they're just kind of doing it, yeah. you know, nonchalant, then you're going to get, you know, essentially what you pay for. So, yeah. But so when you're selling your house, you, you just have to treat it like that business transaction and get somebody in there that's going to yeah. just, you know, that's going to do it, especially yeah. one that's going to do $2,000 worth of, of digital assets. Yeah. And, and they're going to make really that money back. It. Yeah. Yeah. And for sale by owners, there's a good market right now. The market is great to force sale by owners because people are desperate. People are searching every, everything. So if you're priced right and you do halfway decent photos, you're going to be successful for sale by owner. But there's plenty of owners who, who just can't get around it um, or just can't help the fact that they hire a professional because they've never experienced an actual professional or they can't see why it should cost that much. So right. listing agents who are essentially, oh, I'll do it for 1%, but you're going to have to pay a buyer's agent 2.5% or 3%. Right. So essentially, you're going to pay the person that represents you less than the person who's competing against you. Correct. which makes no sense so right. here's here's something that i'm absolutely um I, I preach a lot cheap is expensive and expensive is cheap mm-hmm. because the first time around you try to sell it for a cheap rate you're gonna fail and then next time you're gonna pay someone who's expensive and they're gonna do it right so not only did you pay for the expensive agent but you also paid for a cheap agent and ultimately made you cost charge it also cost you more 
So if you're going to sell your house and you're going to make money off of it and you want it to be successful as well as top dollar, you have to pay for that expense. Yes. And it just, we get it done. Because for sale by owners, although the market is good right now for you, uh, so long as you meet the three conditions that I mentioned earlier. Um, you're, uh, oh crap, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Um, shit. Well, right, continue. Here's, here's back uh, to it. So going back to like high quality photos. So another stat yeah. that I pulled up for homes in the $200,000 to $1 million range, uh, those that include high quality photos, not camera phone, yeah. high quality photos in their listing sell for approximately $3,000 to $11,000 more than homes that used one of these. So we're just talking about high quality photos. So now you start throwing in really good video. 3D tours, uh, aerial shots. So now that three thousand to eleven thousand dollar range starts bumping your price point up a little bit more yeah. because you're you're essentially you're you're selling your home online. You're not selling it in person. You're not you know you're not you're not going to get the chance to go to somebody and say how important this home and how much you know value it has. That's all mm -hmm. going to be done through the digital assets. Yeah. So. It's and and Chris and I are not here necessarily to sell your home. We're here to market your home with those yeah. digital assets. And that's that's a big difference between a lot of agents is agents come in is like, oh, man, I can sell your home. I can sell it. I'm, I'm going to do mm -hmm. this. I'm going to do that. Look, I'm, I'm not here to sell your home. I'm here to market it. Your home is going to sell it. It's going to sell itself by the time I'm done marketing. So yeah. people are just they're going to they're going to come through the floodgates. Just as Chris saw, how many offers did you say you had? Uh, 30. 30 offers. 30 yeah. offers. Yeah. How long did and it take you to go through all those offers? All day. All day. <laughs> I did, a, I did a, a little video at the end of it. Yep. Um, I did a little video. I was exhausted. I probably shouldn't have done it, but <laughs> I wanted yep. to just express like the thoroughness and how maddening it is on, on a good way. Um, yep. Oh, you're having one more? I guess I'll have one more. Yeah, just an, another couple. Just sips, little, little sips there. We still gotta, uh, we still gotta close this down and and uh, so let me touch on a couple other things. I know we're running about an hour and a half, and I'm sorry. Right. Oh, me people probably get bored and hey, let me bored. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, let's see. This is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. So who's the next agent you're going to be interviewing? Um, I don't know. I mean, I I, we'll have. Oh, what's I mean, the next? What's the next topic? There's well, the so many topic, topics. Next topic. So I, I talked to a friend who's uh, he has his uh, construction business. He just got done building a house, like a really nice high end house, um, over in Orlando. And so I was talking to him, and he's like, "Dude, you should have me on. Let's talk about." you know, building houses Ooh. and how much it costs and the, the difference or, you know, should I build a house or should I buy a house already built? So, you know, we're, we're working on some things. So I want to have him on, uh, to talk about everything that it, it that goes into actually building mm -hmm. a house. Now he's, he works on the construction side, so he's going to talk about that. But what we're also going to talk yeah. about is, Man, it can be a headache <laughs> to yeah. Build have you house. have you have you done uh, new construction homes? No, I haven't. Like representing the buyer, so yeah. I have a great amount of experience in mm -hmm. um, new construction sales for for buyers, and I have had some pretty um, challenging, difficult experiences because of it, um, and working with them. So I think it would be a great. That should be a great podcast. I'll I'll send you some notes if you want, some right. questions, some hard questions. Okay. On it. On <laughs> right that. on. Um, so that's what I'm thinking about for the next one. I don't know when it's gonna be or uh because these are just kind of we don't have a set schedule. It's not whiskey Wednesdays or whiskey Tuesdays or you know, whiskey on a Friday. You know, it's just because whiskey is good at any night. So I don't want to limit myself to just one night of good old fashioned whiskey here. So um, but so that's kind of the plan, uh, for upcoming episodes and hopefully they'll get, you know, my techniques, my technical skills with, um, 
posting and everything will be a little bit better by then. But I appreciate everybody sticking with us. Uh, do you have anything Absolutely. else to add, Chris? What uh, websites and uh, what's your website? Websites? Uh, the noon group at gmail.com or okay. sorry, the noon group.com. So, so it, that's my email address. So, okay. So, the noon group.com. So, right N E U N. And then, uh, so. do you do YouTube or anything? Or, uh, I need to get back into it. Honestly, yeah. I started off with it. I have, I have maybe like 16 plus videos, um, kind of doing market updates of so things of that nature, but. You, the thing is, I'm trying to focus on where the people are at, especially my generation. Yeah, my generation is definitely on YouTube, but no one's scrolling really for real estate related like content. So I focus mm-hmm. predominantly on social media. Yeah. Um, and I think it's important, especially with the upcoming generation where you said 32 or 35 percent of buyers are millennials right now. Right. Um, so hiring an agent to that demographic that can cater to that demographic is actually relatively important. Um, interview your agents. Do not be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to hurt people's feelings. If they retaliate, then you made a good decision. Um, right on. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just kind of leave it off with that, man. All right. Well, cool. I appreciate you uh, joining me on this whiskey with an agent. This and, is fun. Uh, yeah, I hope I hope time. to be a part of it some more. Yeah, we will. We'll definitely be doing more. So, well, I'm gonna close it out. I'm gonna uh, hit mute on you there. I'm sorry, but what I got to do. And um, so again, my name's Jared Allison. I wanted to show you something real quick. Again, um, if you want some more information on uh, the real estate market and things like that, go to my YouTube page. Uh, If you just type, go to YouTube and type in JDA Florida Homes, you will find me there. I've got uh, my latest video, Timber, Lumber Prices Are Falling. I posted about one week ago. And in that one, I just talk about lumber prices, why they got up so high and why why they started dropping off and kind of everything in between. So um, go check it out. Give me a like, hit uh, subscribe on my YouTube. It really helps me out. Um, and you can also check out my Facebook page. If you go to facebook.com slash JDA homes, and you can find all of my information there as well. So I appreciate everybody joining me on whiskey with an agent, and I hope that you will join me again. Cheers, everybody drink up and enjoy another glass of whiskey. We'll see you.